Hello and in this video we're going to look at the part two topic describe your perfect holiday and you should say where you would go, who you would go with, what you would do there and explain why you think this would be the perfect holiday. So before we look at the part two model answer, let's take a look at some vocabulary that could be used to talk about holidays, that could be used to talk about weather, that could be used to talk about places. So useful for lots of part one and part two questions. If you are a sun worshipper, it means you worship the sun. You love the sun. You enjoy being in the sun. If you get all hot and bothered, in the sun. This means you get quite angry and annoyed. It makes you feel not very good. You get in a bad mood. You're hot and bad tempered. If you like to sunbathe, this means you like to lie in the sun for hours and end and lie and relax. And because of this, you get a suntan. And this is when your skin changes colour. In the UK, we love getting suntans, even though it's very bad for your skin. And I know in lots of parts of the world, they cover up in the sun because you don't like to get a suntan, which is much better for you. It's much healthier. If you get too much sun, my husband had this a few years ago, arriving in the south of France and spending 12 hours lying in the sun sunbathing, and he got sunstroke. And this is when you get ill after being in the sun for too long, to get sunstroke. If your skin goes really red and starts to burn, we say you get sunburnt. My daughter is very pale, she has very white, pale skin, and if she's in the sun for more than five minutes, she gets sunburnt. If you prefer to stay in the shade, this means that you stay out of the sun, to stay in the shade. In order to protect your skin from the sun, you need to use sun cream or sun block and this is a cream or lotion that protects the skin from the sun and prevents sunburn. A type of holiday you can go on is a package holiday and a package holiday is one which is organised by a travel agent and it includes the flight and the hotel. A holiday you organise yourself is more of an independent holiday where you book the flight and the hotel separately but package holidays are usually cheaper but you don't have as much control over the holiday. Now in many tourist places there are tourist traps. Tourist traps are places that um, tourists go and the goods and services on offer are much more expensive than normal. So you pay a lot more because it's a tourist trap. They're making you pay high prices because lots of tourists go there. Another way of saying lots of tourists is hordes of tourists. Hordes of tourists. So even if you were just talking about your hometown and you come from a place that um, is quite a tourist place, you can say there are hordes of tourists in the summer months. A type of holiday that you can go on is self-catering and this means that you supply all your own food so you don't get the food in the hotel that you're staying in. So you might be staying in an apartment or a villa or a caravan and this is called a self-catering holiday. Now I'll read the model answer for this topic. Well, I'm not really a sun worshipper because in the sun I tend to get all hot and bothered. But if I had the chance to go on my perfect holiday, I would go to the Gold Coast in Australia. Generally, I try to avoid tourist traps and prefer to holiday in less commercialised places. However, the Gold Coast is on my bucket list. Obviously, I'd like to go there with my family because we all lead such hectic lives. It'd be great to spend some quality time together. My kids are into water sports 
And in this particular part of the world, there are ample opportunities to do activities such as scuba diving and surfing. In addition to spending time at the beach and trying to avoid getting sunstroke, I'd like to check out all the cafes and places to eat in the area. I've heard that this area is a foodie's paradise, and as I'm obsessed with food, I'd be able to enjoy all the different kinds of foods on offer. I'm not really into fine dining, so I'd look for independent cafes and street food, rather than flashy restaurants or chains like Starbucks. I guess this would be my perfect holiday because it would be the holiday of a lifetime and it is literally on the other side of the world, so it's not somewhere I can pop to whenever I feel like it. So let's take a look at some of the language. You can see here I've used a sun worshipper and I've said I'm not really a sun worshipper because in the sun I tend to get all hot and bothered. So I get all bad tempered and angry. Some very good second conditional here because remember this is a where would you go question so try to use would in your answer if i had the chance to go on my perfect holiday i would go to so second conditional generally i try to avoid tourist traps these are the places that are very expensive where they charge a high admission fee or you're paying three pounds for a bottle of water. These are called tourist traps. And I prefer to holiday in less commercialised. A less commercialised place is a place that is not developed into a tourist area so it hasn't got lots of tourist traps it's less commercial however the gold coast is on my bucket list this is quite a modern phrase on my bucket list and it comes from the idiom to kick the bucket and to kick the bucket means to die so what people have started doing is creating a bucket list of things you want to do before you die so if going to disney world is your dream then that would be on your bucket list if watching uh, Manchester United play a football match then that is on your bucket list so it's things that you really want to do before you die so it's a great complex little phrase and a very useful one to be on your bucket list to lead such hectic lives this means to have very busy lives hectic means busy my kids are into, remember to avoid using very simple phrases like like, my kids are into. In this particular part of the world, so instead of saying in the Gold Coast, in this particular part of the world, you're referencing it using another phrase. Good collocation here, ample opportunities, and it means many opportunities. Scuba diving is where you use a mask to breathe, underwater. Here we've got um, a good bit of grammar so when you use in addition to and follow it with a verb you can put it in the ing form in addition to doing, in addition to having, in addition to eating, in addition to spending time at the beach so it's just a little bit more complex grammar to impress the IELTS examiner. To avoid getting sunstroke, so this means from getting ill in the sun. I'd like to check out. To check out is quite informal, it's great for IELTS speaking, and it means to look at, to see, to try. It's a foodie's paradise. This means it's a fantastic place for people who love food. Previously, I've used the expression a shopper's paradise. A place that's perfect for people who like shopping. So if somewhere's got lots of restaurants and great food, you can call it a foodie's paradise. Remember, you can use words in other topics. This is a great one for part one, talking about your hometown. And remember, it doesn't have to be true. You can just use the expression because it's great language 
and it doesn't matter. The IELTS examiner is not going to go to your hometown and find out if it is actually a foodie's paradise. I'm obsessed with, I love food. All the different kinds of food on offer. This means available. I'm not really into fine dining. So again, I don't really like fine dining is where you go to expensive restaurants like Michelin starred restaurants where you pay a lot of money, usually for very small portions. So I'd look for independent cafes. The independent cafes are the opposite to the chains. A chain is where it's a group owned by one company. An independent cafe is one or two small cafes and they're not part of a chain. Street food, this is quite a new word as well and it's food that you get in the street. There's a lot, certainly in the UK, street food is becoming much more popular so you have stalls selling food in the street. Flashy restaurants, these are the upmarket expensive restaurants where you get fine dining. The holiday of a lifetime. This is your once in a lifetime holiday and so very useful for this topic. So it's not somewhere I can pop to. Very informal English and it just means to go to. Lot of useful vocabulary in this video not just for this topic. Think about using these words and phrases in your part one for talking about your hometown as well. Hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.